Hey everyone, we are back talking about weathering, erosion, and deposition. Yeah, I don't know what you've been told, but when I was in school, uh, it was all lumped under the same name, erosion. But there are actually three different processes going on here, so we need to separate those. Alright, so let's start with weathering. To weather something. There are basically two forms of weathering that can happen. The first one is mechanical weathering where you physically take a rock and you break it into smaller and smaller pieces. The rock doesn't change its composition, so the minerals are still the same, but you now just have a large chunk into smaller chunks. Well, you still get larger chunks into smaller chunks with chemical weathering, but this time it's a little more insidious. It's more like getting some chemicals into the rocks and those chemicals change the composition of the rock and then the rock break down as a result. Both of these are happening pretty much all the time on the surface of the earth, but how can we distinguish if it's been physical or chemically weathered? Well, let's look at an example. And we'll start off with a frost wedge. What is a frost wedge? Well, we see this all the time in western Pennsylvania. When it freezes and warms and freezes and warms, what happens is you get this expansion and contraction of the rock surface. A good example of this that you guys see every day is potholes. And potholes form by this same thing. The water freezes inside of cracks, expands a little bit. When it melts, it leaves a bigger crack. More water seeps down into the crack. It freezes, makes a bigger crack, and it's just a repeating cycle. So pressure reduction. Pressure reduction, we kind of talked about this in the last section with groundwater and caves. This is when extreme pressures are released because of supporting structures underneath just can't support all the weight above it, creating a sinkhole. Sure, exfoliation is when you take the outer layers off of something. So to take the outer layers off of a rock, you get a heating and cooling action over and over again, which loosens the outer layer of rocks, very much like frost wedging. But in this case, it doesn't split the rock apart, it flakes the rock off the surface, which then moves along. The outer layer of the rock gets heated, heat causes expansion, at night it cools, causes the rock to shrink a little bit, and that repeated heating and cooling will eventually, like you said, flake off that outer layer. So then we got root pry. What root pry is, is really kind of like frost wedging, but with plants. You've got a plant that grows in a rocky area, just finds the right conditions, and as you can see this tree is growing, its roots are getting larger and larger. They're pushing the large boulder in, uh, apart and breaking it up into smaller pieces. And especially if you see it, something like this, you see this all along the turnpike, they have trees growing out of the sides of cliffs. You think, why don't they just take those down? Well, the as much as they're breaking down the rock, they're actually holding up a lot of the rocks on that cliff face as well. So removing them would actually cause more landslides than just letting them be. Yeah, they can act very much like a safety net. Abrasion is a really simple process. It's scratching. And so when small pieces of rock are picked up by wind or water and they bump against larger rocks, they actually break that rock apart. Just tiny little pieces, but still it's breaking apart and the rock, the larger rock will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, you can compare it to sandblasting. So sandblasting smooths the surface because you're shooting little tiny pieces of quartz onto a surface and the quartz is harder than the rock that it hits or whatever it hits and it smooths it out. So those are all the physical forms of weathering. Let's now look at the chemical form. Again, chemical weathering is when things break down sort of from the interior of the rock. It's a chemical change. Things that can cause chemical weathering are water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, acids. And temperature also can affect this, so if you're in a warmer climate, higher temperatures will speed up reactions. Warm climates, if you've got water, acids mixing in to your rock layers, they can accelerate this chemical weathering. So the first thing in chemical weathering could be this example of hydrolysis, where basically water dissolves minerals out and can kind of pit holes in rock layers. Looks a lot like an alien landscape when it does this. Okay, with uh, carbon dioxide, we've talked about this in caves, that carbon dioxide and water creates this carbonic acid, uh, but plants can also create an acid that can eat away at rocks and pit the rocks. 
Now, one thing you don't want to do at your home is to allow plants to grow up the side of the house, especially if you have a rock exterior like brick or stone, because uh, the acids in the plants will cause weathering. And another chemical form here is oxidation. Oxidation is when oxygen combines with a material and changes it from its original form to something else. And the famous example of that is leaving your bike out in the rain and creating rust. So it's not so much the water that does it, but it's the oxygen in the water that mixes with the iron and the iron becomes iron oxide, which, is, which weakens the structure of the bike and eventually it'll break it down. Um, a really good way to f see um, oxidation is a change in color. With rust, it's sort of an orange thing. With tin, it's black. With copper, it's green. So when we got the Statue of Liberty in the beginning, it was not the green color we have today. It was copper. Yeah, they've cleaned this a bunch of times and it's still green. Um, acid precipitation. Uh, we know that carbonic acid forms naturally in rainwater. So all water is acidic when it falls from the sky. But if it has extra things in it, say some sulfur to make some sulfuric acid or uh, different substances that make it stronger, then we call it acid rain. And that can really work on the surface of a lot of different objects. Yeah, so that pretty much covers our physical versus chemical weathering. So when you see a scenario, you try to think, okay, is it just physically breaking from a large piece to a small piece, or is it changing the internal chemistry of the material? So once all the rock is broken down, then what can happen? Well, then it can do two more things. It'll, and the first thing that it'll do, it'll move from the place that it broke down to somewhere else. And that's called erosion. The second thing that can happen is deposition, which means uh, it places it somewhere. So the erosion is the movement of the material. So if the material is in one place and goes somewhere else, it has been eroded now. Yes, it had to be weathered and broken down before the erosion happened. But then whenever it gets dropped somewhere else, we now have deposition. Materials are dropped off in a different location. Yeah. So the agents that are going to do this, we've already seen water do it in rivers and cave systems. We're going to see water now do it in beaches and shorelines. We're going to see how wind can weather, erode, and deposit materials. Same with gravity and eventually the big guy, ice. Yeah. So one example we could talk about where we could say, all right, is this being weathered or is this being eroded is this. We've got water seeping into the cracks of the rock and it gets really cold at night because it's up on the top of a mountain. So what would you say? Is this weathering or is this erosion? Well, the first thing I do is figure out, is the thing moving? And in this particular case, it doesn't say anything about anything moving. So if it's not moving, it can't be erosion. Okay. So I'm gonna next thing I'm gonna do is go to weathering. Okay. And is it physical or chemical? Well, then I have to consider again a couple of things. Um, is this being broken apart by something that is a physical thing that would make it mechanical, or is it actually being broken down into something else? In this particular case, I don't think it's being changed into something else. It looks as though this piece of rock is being broken off by one of our processes from the mechanical weathering list. Okay, so it's being pushed up from a large rock to a smaller rock, physical weathering. But if we go down to here, we now have the erosion. Definitely have movement here. You can see that whatever was happening in the previous picture has now caused movement to and, the, of the rocks to the bottom of the hill. And what was the agent? The original agent was ice. It was frost wedging. And that particular agent was a physical weathering process, mechanical weathering, that broke the rock apart. Once that happened, gravity took over and rolled some rocks down the hill. There you go. So when you look at a scenario, that's what you want to think. How is it being weathered, physical or chemical? And once it's weathered, how does it move? What's causing it to move? And when it finally gets to its final resting place, like this boulder at the bottom of the floor, we can say it has been deposited by gravity.